Hello and welcome to another tutorial video here from Zanata Consulting. My name is Tyler Colts, and in this video, we're going to be walking through a quick overview of Zoho Bookings. This video is actually an excerpt from a full webinar that we did on calendar meetings and bookings. So if you find this useful, you very well might want to check that out as well on our channel. Before we jump in, I do want to ask if you find this video useful, please be sure to like and subscribe down below because that really does help us out. And if it sparks any comments, questions, or feedback, please leave those in the comments section below as we do try to read and respond to each and every one of those on our weekly podcast, Azaz. Thanks again for watching, and I hope you enjoy. So I'm kind of on the default page that you'll land on when you go through Zoho Bookings. Up across the top are a lot of the different kind of configuration settings that we'll want to cover. Here on the calendar is really just anything that shows up for various users that has been booked on a connected calendar. Now what you'll see is that the calendar is not yet connected, and I'll show that in our integration settings. And at that time, we'll see some of those meetings we were playing with actually show up here. So again, calendar views is going to drop us into that kind of homepage. Quick look at anything that's been booked for any of the users. Services here are essentially what can be booked through Zoho Bookings, right? So this is a tool similar to Acuity Scheduling, Calendly, Setmore, right? Any of those other options. Here I have a 30-minute meeting. Maybe we wanted to create a 60-minute meeting. I can go ahead and create a new one-on-one -on -one booking. Obviously, we're going to change our duration here to one hour. You can charge for meetings through this, and it will actually collect the payment for you uh, upon booking. So if that is something you'd like to do, I'm going to leave that off so I can demo this a little easier later. I don't want to pull up my credit card, but you actually are able to do that. If you'd like to have buffers on your meeting, essentially saying, hey, I can't be booked back to back to back to back, you can go ahead and set those up. I'm a lunatic, so I'm going to say no buffers, you know, say la vie, we're just going to let it happen. Last but not least, we're able to decide if one or more users should be associated with a particular booking. So in this case, I'm going to put both of our users as part of our one-on-one -on -one booking. Now, I'll show this real quick. We're not going to go into resource bookings on our session today, but I will show group bookings. So a group booking is essentially one where we are able to book a round robin, essentially, of people within a particular meeting. It's a bit of a black box in terms of how the round robin is done. Uh, if you look on the forum, so he'll say, you know, it's kind of a load balancing algorithm that they have. Seems to work pretty well. We've got a couple clients that actually just let it do its thing in terms of round robining, and things do seem to get spread out pretty evenly. In this case, I'm just going to do a one-on-one, -on -one, and I'll go ahead and save that. So I'm going to just quickly fly through a couple of the other options. So you can't actually set up everything when you're creating it. So here, you know, this is basically the stuff that we just filled in. Staff assigned is if we want to add or remove anybody who might be booked through this service. Availability, uh, you know, this is looking at how far in advance can someone book and what the available times are. So you can either have it be based on the availability of staff or based on particular hard-coded time slots that you'd like to have available. Sometimes you want different meetings that have different options here. The way I do it internally is sales calls, client calls, any of those are just based on my availability. Client onboarding calls, which get their own particular link, have to be done within certain blocks of the day. Just to make sure we can prepare for them, you know, do our kind of initial review, make sure that we're good to go to hit the ground running on that new project. In this case, I'm gonna do it based on staff availability. Jumping in as well, of course, we have some options here for setting up automated notifications um, for your internal staff, right? You can have it send emails or texts when things are booked, rescheduled, canceled. As well, you can set up upcoming reminders, right? So if you want to get a text 15 minutes before, you can surely set that up. On the customer side, we have all those same notification options, and we are able to customize those here through this UI. It has a couple of these on by default. I think most of these make sense, but you can surely adjust them to fit your particular preferences. Speaking of preferences, quick fly through of service preferences here. So this, this one up at the top is a big one. So if you want to allow them to select staff, that basically means you don't care who they book with. If you do not want to allow this, is when it will do kind of the auto assignment, you know, link it to a particular person. I'm going to have this on for now just so you can see the UI for it. But again, it just depends on your use case. 
couple other options here, you know, minimum or maximum notices. So, you know, how far out can something be booked for this particular service? You know, and how how short term can this be booked for a particular service? I would not recommend leaving this as the default option of zeros because that means that, uh, you know, it's 1020 as I record this. I could be booked at 1030, right? 10 minutes from now if I have this turned off. Booking form just allows us to capture some additional information. So we've got name, email, contact phone number, and maybe I want company name. I can go ahead and just add that, drag it to where I like it. I like it right there. So I'll put it right there. And, you know, you can add anything you'd like here. All of this becomes available via API once this is booked. So if you want to integrate this with something fun, you can totally do that. Booking URL just gives us a direct link to this booking page. And embed as a widget gives us the iframe of that. So if you'd like to have this on your own page on the website, you can do that without an issue. What it will look like when we actually open this up is like so. And it will give us that UI that allows us to essentially peek into the calendar, pick a user or have it auto assign, right? So it kind of gives them the option because of that setting I had earlier. Pick our date, our time, anything that is available. Now, there are a few different kind of UIs you can pick for this that I'll show in just a moment. But each of them will have kind of a similar look and feel when the user actually jumps in to book their meeting. Jumping over to staff, we'll go quick here. Really, the big thing that you need to look at with staff is working hours. If you are not setting the availability on a per service basis, again, it's going to default to these. So this is 9.30 to 6 p.m. That's a long day of meetings. Hopefully I don't get booked all day. But other than that, you know, nothing too crazy. Each individual person also has their own booking page. So, you know, in this case, you know, our first booking page is for a service picking a user. If you wanted to give somebody a link to book with you and pick what service, you would give them this other option for a link, right? So now the choice is which service rather than which user. In my use case, the way I use our booking tool, this is more what I would be doing is essentially, you know, my link and my signature would drop you right in here, book 30 minutes with me and you are good to go. I also kind of like the UI this a little more, kind of showing the calendar days, the, the availability. So a lot of the times people end up going this way. Again, nothing else too crazy here. We can set up a couple little options for the booking page if we'd like it to have a different UI. So I changed it over to sleek here instead of default. And we'll open that up. So here again, nothing too crazy, right? Similar widgets, similar options, just depends on what you're looking to get done and the UI that you know people are gonna prefer for you. Now I'm gonna jump into settings and we're gonna go through these pretty quick. Under our general settings, again, time zone, org name, all that good stuff. Working hours is kind of the default for the company. So a new user will be added and they will have these working hours by default. We also kind of have a like master booking page that would show like all options for all things. This doesn't get used too often, right? Because a lot of the times you're pointing someone to a particular location, service, person, something. But if you just want to go, hey, carp launch, book whatever you want with anyone you want, you can do that here from this page. Notifications, again, these are little pop-ups, dings, bells here and there within the app that you can set up. Other than that, you know, renaming a couple things. If you don't want them to be called services, you could change that to meetings, bookings, you know, whatever you'd like. But other than that, nothing too crazy here on the Zoho booking side. 